Hey, thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. This is Lori from Goodyear, Arizona. Coming to you from the heart of the desert. Just wanted to show you some ideas I have for how I go about um, doing some collage art in my art journal. So what I've done to get to this point is I prepped my background with some gesso and some paints and then um, I used a decorative napkin, this napkin. I peeled it down to the single layer. Uh, which would look like this. It's just one single thin layer. And then I went ahead and used matte gel medium and I added that circle border around the edge. I love that. Looks really cool. So that's going to be my base page for making a collage image. So now the next step is coming up with what you're going to use for your elements for your collage. How do you do that? That A lot of people ask that question and uh, for me, it's just, I decide what kind of a character I want to create, and for this one, of course, it's going to be um, a female girl, kind of funky, but a wonky, funky girl. Um, so what I want to do is I want to find something, and this is a page out of a uh, magazine, or a book, I'm sorry, that has um, antiques pieces in it, and they, it talks about the antique pieces. I love this for maybe doing um, a genie and a genie lamp page maybe that's kind of cool but this silver bowl right here I see that as something that could easily be used as a skirt or you know from the, the skinny little waist down to this point and then maybe having some legs come out of here would be a perfect bottom part of a girl so that's what I'm gonna start with is that and then I want to build my way up from there. So now I've got her waist down and I need a um, torso. So this was an ad out of a magazine and it is a champagne bottle with like, um, you can buy these little, it's almost like a Santa suit that slips over the champagne bottle to give it as a gift at Christmas time. And I cut it out because I just thought that was too neat to um, waste for using it for a collage image. So from the waist up, that would make a really cute torso image. I know that's supposed to be like the collar of the Santa suit, but I could see that as her body and um, the top part of her body. So that's what I'm gonna use for that in the bottom for her skirt. Um, I needed to find something that had arms, so I found a magazine image with arms that I liked. I think I may use this girl's face as the head, and I may use big over-exaggerated eyes. We'll just have to see as I start to build. But that's what I do. Okay, so for a girl, for a body, uh, uh, even if it's a wonky character, you need her body, you need her arms, her legs, her, the bottom half of her body. You need her head, you need ha things that look like hair or something wild and different for hair. And you can draw the hair and paint it on and do some zen tangle and do some wild things. So that's where I get started when I'm gonna make a quirky character is find unusual things like a container that can be flipped. Like another page I did, and I'll show you that. I used a Tiffany lamp as the skirt of the girl. So that just gives you an idea of what I'm talking about for containers. So here's another one where I used a teapot as the bottom half and then I had the girl coming out of the teapot. So using containers is a neat thing to do to look through your magazines and your um, books and images and find some image that just looks interesting as it is or possibly flipped upside down. For an example, in this one, this is an actual um, teapot and uh, tea, teacup and saucer, but I flipped it upside down and I made it a hat on her body. So look for those kind of things and find something for her bodice, her arms, her legs, her body, her, what you're going to do for her face, maybe something wild that'll create a hat. That's how I get started for a... Um, whimsical girl character for my art journal page. And then the next thing you're going to do, of course, is to start cutting out your items and your images. So I'm gonna cut this out. I'm gonna cut this out completely as it is. And I may leave it skinny like that with a really exaggerated, cinched in tiny little waist. 
and then um, put it over the top of this and then cut this skinny and create the bodice so that it's she's got a little tiny super exaggerated waist in these these characters that you create they can be funky they can have super big heads and super small bodies or super small heads and super big bodies or great big feet or very long arms you exaggerate them and play around with them to make them kind of a wonky funny interesting character to look at so that's what i'm going to do is cut this out first and then see how i want to cut this out next so here's what i have so far i've got my container I've got the top part that I trimmed out with a little tiny narrow waist and then I have her arms and I just slipped her arms over and then put her bot body part on there so that's like that so that's a good start and now I need to add a head to it so I need to trim her head out to add a head and um, probably leave her neck on there so it's coming along and the bottom half I saved and that might even go might even look cute at the bottom here underneath um, you know if you slip this under that even kind of looks interesting as part of her outfit because it matches the top so and then her legs coming out from here for something interesting so and for this that was going to be her skirt and I'm not 100% sure that I love it so I'm just going to put it aside for a minute it could also be cut right here on the line and then this part removed and it would be an adorable hat so that's a possibility and um, I found this with these big flowers on it they're like peony flowers and that would be a gorgeous skirt underneath her if you slip that underneath one of those flowers just makes a really pretty skirt underneath that dress so I think that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this flower as a skirt so I'll go ahead and cut that out so that's really cute to have the flower as her skirt and then even the rest of this outfit that was on the champagne bottle underneath it just looks really cute too so I think I'm gonna go with that and then I cut the top off of this uh, silver bowl and I'm gonna go ahead and make just a little slit across this area you know like the opening of the bowl and I'm not going perfectly straight I kind of wanted a little wobbly and wonky and I think I may use this as a hat possibly maybe on her I'm not sure okay so I decided I'm gonna save this for another collage with um, an image where I have a bigger head her head is too tiny it, this looks too big for me it's not working out so I'm just gonna put that aside I'll just put it in my folder for a hat and I've put a flower up on top of her. I really like that. That looks super cute. I'm going to bring my book back in and see how she fits on the page. And I kind of have a feeling that she may be a little big to put feet. So I may just end up just doing the girl image with the flower. Yes. <coughs> And now that I have it on here, I think I'm even going to leave the bottom part off and just have the flowers. So that's how it works with collage. You really kind of just have to play around and mess with it and see what you what you like. And this is a very small journal, so the image has to be kind of small. I like working in bigger journals when I do collage for that reason because you have more room to do funky legs and cute feet and so this is kind of a um, an odd book to do uh, collage in. but it's still gonna be cute so I'm still gonna go with it so and to add some interest I think I'm gonna choose one of these purses and trim it out and add that to the collage over her arm Okay, so now I'm going to build my collage and I'm going to put her right down to the edge of the page, I believe. And what I like to do is to start putting together the elements like this is going to go on top of here to make her outfit. 
And then I flip it over and I put a little piece of scotch tape on the back, just enough to hold it in place. So it doesn't shift on me. So there's that piece put together. And then I've put the purse down over the arm and slid it on the arm so it can be on here. And then um, this needs to go behind here and on this. So I'll put it where I want it to go and again flip it and tape it. Putting that tiny little bit of tape just holds it together for me so that when I put it down on the page it'll be much much easier. It's not going to shift around plus you've got to make sure that you're layering all your little elements. The arms go behind. They wrap around and go behind so I'm going to get them in place and get them in the angle that I want them. That's kind of tricky. I kind of like it off to the side like that. That's kind of cool. So carefully hold it in place, flip it and tape it so it doesn't move. Oops, my little purse flipped over here. Flip that back. There we go. It's looking really cute. And then this is going to go on her head. And I'm not going to worry about that, where that's going to go, because I can put that on last, so that's okay. Just need to make sure that these arms are where I want them. over and that looks really cute and I do have room to add some legs I'm gonna I'm gonna do that so I just need to decide what I want to use for legs because see there is enough room to put her and then have her legs coming out from her skirt Okay, and I want to add some legs, so I'm going to use these legs. They're way too long, so I'm not going to be able to use the feet portion of it, but I like the angle of the, the legs and knees, and I'm going to have them coming out from this skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that out, and um, I'm going to cut it here and save those feet because you could I could maybe use them for something else in another collage and I'm just using that portion of the legs so I'm going to trim those out. So here are the legs and I want them to go into this flower part so the back part of the flower is like the back part of a skirt. So what I want to do is put this down on my mat and get out my X-Acto knife And I'm going to cut along this flowery edge here, kind of in a random pattern with the petals, so that I can tuck those legs up behind. And I'm not sure how much of them I'm going to need or how far. I'm just going to kind of wing that part of it. I just want it to... I want the legs to be able to stick in there. And go behind these leaves. Okay. And then 
can split that apart away and I can slide these in like this. There we go. And get them just the way you want them. See, and then you've got your legs coming out from the skirt, the flower skirt. So I want to go back over here to the page and I'm going to use matte gel medium for this. I like the um, Winsor Newton matte gel. It sticks just right and I like how, how it goes on and it dries with a very, very nice matte finish, but it sticks really well for magazine images. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put the matte medium right on the page and I'm just putting a thin, nice layer. doesn't have to be thick. Putting a thin layer down where she's going to go. I know everybody has a different process for this. Some people use double-sided tape. Some people use um, art glitter glue to glue these little images down. The only reason I love art glitter glue, the only reason I don't use that a lot of times on this type of a collage is you can see the little lines of glue. So now I'm going to put her in place where I want her. Okay, and then the next thing I like to do is take a soft cloth or a paper towel and push down on that image. Now you're going to see where it needs more matte gel medium. See that stuck down really well. And where she is layered on top, one on top of the other, obviously there's no matte medium underneath there. So that's when you start going in and like lifting up her arm, putting some under there. Doing this this way, this method, I tend to um, have less problems with getting warping and wrinkling. And underneath here, because there's no nothing holding that down to her top. And then under her arm, make sure I get it under there. And just start working my way down to stick down the elements. Go underneath her purse. Put it where I want it. And the Windsor Newton, I've tried, I have tried so many different kinds of matte medium. Um, lots of different brands from the expensive to the inexpensive. And my favorite is the Windsor Newton for this, for this type. Um, for some reason it just seems to work the best on magazine smooth slick images and I love how it dries and you can use your paint pens on top of it afterwards so that's what I really like too okay so now she's stuck down and she's super smooth and now I just want to let that completely dry. My little leg needs a little bit more under it. Just want to make sure you get everything stuck down really well. And I'm going to put her flower up here. Okay, so now I'm going to just let that completely air dry. And just a suggestion, don't be tempted to take your heat tool and try to dry this faster. Um, my experience is when you use a heat tool on magazine images that you have glued down, 
they do tend to warp and buckle. If you let them air dry, they dry nice and flat. So that's just my suggestion. Okay, so now I'm going to trim the bottom of the page where the legs come off the edge and trim where the purse comes off the edge. Okay, and now I'm ready to do my um, pen work on this page. I love it. It's cute. It's turning out really cute. I'm going to use my uh, Ranger Dilutions. This is a clear piece of plastic with a border edge. Uh, Diane Reevely uses this a lot for journaling in her videos. So what I'm going to do is put that down and I'm going to make some light pencil lines behind her for doing journaling. And I'm going to just move it down a little bit and make more lines. And this is going to be where I'm going to write my, write my journaling. And I want this cool kind of a swirl wavy pattern for doing my journaling. So I'm just using this as a template for that, for where I can write my journaling. And now I'd like to take my Posca pens and I like to do my my uh, pen work and on this particular one I'm going to go around her skirt in white, a white Posca. I'm making her that flower into a skirt. And I'm going to go below it and do some doodling to make it like lacy, like this. Like I'm just adding lace to the bottom of that to make it look even more like a skirt. So this is where you just play around with it and do some journaling and some doodling and add some fun, interesting things to it. Put some dots in here to make this look lacy. See how you add those little doodling to it and it makes it just so much fun. And then here on this edge that's the front part, I'm going to do the same thing, go around that edge in white, like where her legs are coming out, and make that another row of lace. So there's lace in the front, all, so it's like all around the skirt. And this is the part where you just get creative. Some people get stuck on this part and I find this part the most fun and freeing because you really can just be super creative and play around with it. So look how cute that makes her skirt at the bottom. Hopefully I can see that. I love it. It makes that flower turn into a skirt. I may put some stripes on her uh, black leggings and black sleeves. Um, I'm definitely going to do some pen work around the flower. I may give her some um, Frida style eyebrows and I'm going to add with some black. I think I'm going to take some black and go around here. I'm going to make some this is going to be like added hair. I'm going to add some like buns, kind of Princess Leia type buns. And I'm going to fill that in even more, but I kind of want more hair behind her like this. So I'm going to play around with it and do some doodling and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like.
So here's how it came out. Here's my girl. She's got kind of a Frida-esque look and I love her flower. Her outfit is cute. Her little lace on her skirt. Her little leggings. The border in napkin and then my journaling and I erased my lines, my pencil lines. I did have to do a correction down here because I boo-booed so <laughs> I put some gesso down and corrected it but the words we do not heal the past by dwelling there we heal by being being fully present today is what I wanted this page to be about and if you know the history of Frida she kind of um, dwelled a lot on her past and her circumstance and it it to me in my opinion made her stuck a lot of times and I'm trying to avoid that myself so that's my message in my art journal and I decided to use white to um, go around some letters for certain words that I want to stand out one of them being the word heal so I'm just taking my white Posca pen and drawing a border around my black letters and then those words will kind of just pop off the page and stand out a little bit more but I want to do all the words in the journaling just a couple words that I want to stand out but I like the word heal and I'm going to think I'm going to do um, the word present So I put down a little bit of color with my Faber-Castell pit marker along next to her and then just kind of blend it out with a water brush. I'm going to do that around this flower. See how I'm just coloring it on and then taking my water brush and just blending the outside edge out. So it just kind of makes her pop because she's got a pink edge around her, like a pink shadow behind her. And I think I might even do it on this side. I usually only do it on one side because of like in art, you know, you look for your light source so there's going to be a shadow side. But on an art journal page, I don't really think that it matters. And I'm, I'm just basically trying to get the image to pop a little bit. So... I'm just going along the edge of her and around her little dress here and up by the flower. So see I kind of just gave her a pink border all the way around and then blending it out with my water brush. It's kind of a neat effect too. It looks really pretty. And I just add some interest. I like that little pop of bright pink color around her. There. And there she is. I love this colorful spread. I hope you enjoyed my process of making a collage funky girl image and that you had fun. So until next time, thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs and remember that art always soothes the heart.